What's up guys, Trainer Mike here for your bodybuilding.com Flex Friday workout of the week. Super excited to be here to take you guys through that light upper body pull. So I put it up on my story and I gave you guys four options this week. It was either chest or back, it was light upper body pull, it was legs or it was arms. And by two votes, you guys picked upper body pull. So it was close between that and chest and back. Maybe I'll throw up that chest and back option next week, but uh, definitely between those two. So this is a good workout. So for those of you who have been following along, you know I'm following, uh, the split I'm following right now is upper body push, upper body pull, and legs. And each week I hit that for two times. One day is a little heavier, so we're going more like five sets of you know maybe five to eight reps. And then the next day we come back and we go light for about uh, you know three to four sets of anywhere from 10 to 15 reps. And today is that lighter day. Now light doesn't mean that it's easy. That just means that we're moving lighter weight for more reps, which actually kind of harder. It gets your heart rate up a lot more. You start feeling a lot more of that lactic acid build up in the muscle and that burn. So definitely not an easier day, but something that's a little different. So we're starting off, um, and, and on these lighter days, we're doing more isolation work, more dumbbell work, more cable work, and a little less of your compound movement. So we're starting off with an interesting lat pull today. Okay, now this lat pull, we're doing on cable. So if you just have your typical cable rack here, this works out really, really well for getting in some really good lat work. It's gonna hit a little different angle than your typical lat pull down because we're coming from the sides as well. So you're getting a really strong pull from the outside, which is gonna allow you to activate the lats a little bit differently. So we're gonna start off here with four sets of 15. We're gonna pick a weight that uh, we can definitely control. The, the tempo is really important to us. The, uh, the quality of the reps, the stretch, the contraction is really, really important here. So we're going to go for our first set of 15 reps. So we kneel down for this one. We're gonna take a, a single knee, make sure you're in the middle here. And we go for 15 pull. So there it is, 15 reps, first set. I'm gonna go up just a little bit. We're resting about 60 seconds on our first set. Okay, so doing shoulder or chest press, feeling more tension in the left side. What does that mean? Um, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're stronger in that side. But what it means is you probably have some kind of muscular imbalance in that shoulder. I really recommend a lot of foam rolling through the chest and the anterior deltoid for pretty much everybody. Try that to see if it doesn't balance it out. How can I reduce stomach fat and get abs? Need some workout suggestions? You don't need workout suggestions, you need diet suggestions, okay? If you are trying to get your abs to show, it's because you have too much body fat on your midsection for those abs to show. So yes, there are a lot of great ab exercises. Try cutting down on the calories. What did you do for your warm-up? What did I do for my warm-up? I got a PVC pipe and I did a lot of pass-throughs to try and warm up the lats and the shoulders. Um, for a workout like today, not a ton of warm-up because we're not getting into any really intense compound movements. It didn't require a lot, but a good five minutes or so of warming up the shoulders. Set two, 15 reps. Notice the range of motion here, full, full range of motion. Four.
the burn, your biceps, your lats, everything will start to burn when you do 15 controlled reps like that. Yes, I took a pre-workout today. I did diamondized pre-well, guys. I always take diamondized pre-well before these workouts because I always want to give you guys the most energy as possible. And the other thing I did is I added four, so four grams of citrulline malate in there as well for an extra pump. How much protein should you take in a single day? I recommend one gram per pound of lean body mass. So. Go get your body fat taken. If you're 200 pounds, 10% body fat, it's 180 pounds or 180 grams of protein. Can you use a face pull to warm up? Face pulls are great warm ups for back or for shoulders. Really good for the rotator cuffs. Um, we're going to do face pulls today in the workout as part of the workout later. So, upper body pull, we're doing everything from back to rear delts to biceps. And you guys will notice I'm strapping up on these. Everything on your light day, I'm strapping up with because I'm really trying to focus on the back. Your forearms will burn out really easy with 15 reps, so I just strap it up. Ah. <sighs> 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 Uh, hey. uh, 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 Lighten up, I'm a little heavy there. I had to go a little shorter on my range of motion than I would prefer. I do incorporate foam rolling into my warm-ups for lower body days, um, and I like to do it for maybe five to 10 minutes, but foam rolling, um, if, you're, if you're pretty healthy muscle tissue, I would, I would prefer to do it outside of my workout so I have more time to do it. If you build more muscle, do you become less flexible? No. Less mobile? Maybe. It's really hard to keep mobility with a lot of muscle mass, but it can be done if you work on it. Do I use trap or rear delt exercise? Yes, rear delt definitely. Trap, no. I don't do any direct trap work. I'm a firm believer if you deadlift enough and heavy enough, you don't need to do trap work. I think it's a waste of time. Maybe my traps suck, I don't know. But uh, that's my philosophy. Okay, 15. Guys, notice my arms go all the way straight. I let my shoulder blades separate, and then I squeeze together hard. burn is real there we go four sets very controlled pulls there my lats are on fire my biceps are feeling it too that's okay if you feel a little bit in your biceps nothing wrong with that um, but now it's time to work on to some seated rows we're gonna do these a little differently as well keys to building muscle um, with your training progressive overload meaning you need to constantly be adding more volume, more weight to your workouts. As far as nutrition goes, that protein is huge. Getting at least that gram per pound of lean body mass is absolutely key. All right, guys. So we are going to go with seated rows, but we're going to use um, the, the rope as an option here. 
So the rope gives you a nice um, different way of hitting the seated rows because it's gonna allow us to get a little better range of motion in. So we're gonna try and get a short rope here if we can get the attachment on. And we're gonna use that as our preferred source here. I add citrulline into pretty much all of my upper body workouts, um, lower body. I'm not like chasing that crazy quad pump that actually hurts a little more than anything. So every upper body day I'll add citrulline in and I just don't see any reason why not to. Um, you know, I might take as much as 12 grams of citrulline before a workout and I see a lot of benefit from that. Okay, four sets of 15 here. The rope will allow you to really get those shoulder blades to squeeze together. I really like that. Do I do cardio on leg days? Typically, I like to finish leg days with like 10 to 20 minutes of stationary bicycle. Just get that blood moving. I feel like it helps with recovery, but no intense cardio on leg days. Which protein is best for building muscle? Which protein is best for muscle? You know, your ideal source is gonna be a whey protein isolate. Um, but if you do like a mix of an isolate concentrate, that's fine for a budgetary standpoint. If you just can't afford the isolate, you're okay going that route. But if you can afford it, I recommend isolate. Should I always go to a failure or should I set something? Should you always go to failure? Um, the scientific part of me says no, but the, hey, I'm hardcore and I'm a man says yes. So I would say no, it's not always good to go to failure, but you should be pretty dang close. Pretty dang close. You just get a lot of central nervous system burnout if you're constantly training to failure. Okay, here we go. Set two, 15 reps. Got a little heavy there. We're gonna go light for the next set. Make sure we're getting a better range of motion. So Jackie, Facebook wants to know how many exercises do I typically do per body part per workout? Depends, 16 to maybe as much as 24. Um, I, I really do feel it out. I like to train at higher volumes. But for me personally, probably 16. Um, creatine, creatine before or after workout doesn't matter, okay? Creatine builds up in your bloodstream over time and you see the benefits of that. It's not like caffeine where you gotta take it 30 minutes before your workout because it peaks an hour after intake. Um, I like just throwing it in my post-workout shake. Um, seems to absorb a little better with carbohydrates. Rahul, giving me a shout out about my podcast. Thank you very much. Three episodes in. We put it up every Sunday. Appreciate you guys checking that out. All right, here we go. 15 reps. Hey. reps really get the heart rate up it's great for just overall conditioning as well do I think beta alanine is better than creatine no it's not like it's not as simple as a crunchy versus creamy debate here 
Beta alanine and creatine are two totally separate ingredients that have different benefits. <laughs> crunchy peanut butter or creamy peanut butter? We still got to ask this question, guys. We're team crunchy. If you're overweight, can you build muscle and lose fat at the same time? A little bit. Okay, you can do a little of one and a lot of the other, but don't expect to get a lot of muscle and a lot of weight loss at the same time. So you guys can find my podcast is on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher. It's the Fit Couples Perspective. I do it with my wife. Go check it out. Appreciate you guys and the support there. Um, it's not linked on my IG, but every Sunday, if you guys follow on my Instagram at TrainerMike1, I put the link up there for the podcast. All right, guys, here we go. 15. Uh. There it is. If you guys have not tried the seated row using the rope attachment, I recommend it as a great way to get a killer, killer back workout. <laughs> yes, 16 sets. 16 sets per body part, not 16 different workouts. That would be challenging. You know what, casein proteins are good. Um, I don't do a lot of them. Uh, I, I prefer, I, I always like to think of protein as use it when you need it. Most people are at home in the evening and they can do whole food. So we wanna do whole food when we can. So I prefer like a cottage cheese or eggs before bed. Um, but it is a different texture, a different consistency with casein. Try making a pudding with it. So just a little bit of water, really thick put it in the freezer, that's usually makes a really nice consistency. Okay, next up we have reverse, <clears throat> um, reverse seat, close grip pull down, okay? So we're gonna go right here. We're gonna sit without our legs locked in right here. And the benefit to that is that it's really gonna allow us to isolate the back. When we use the knee pads as part of this, we have the tendency to rock and to row a little more than we should. And we're really trying to target that straight up and down, just slight lean back here for 15. We got 13 there, killer burn through the lats. Make sure when you guys are doing this that you're getting that full extension, really letting those shoulder blades split apart before we contract. Do I like protein bars? Um, protein bars for me, they're important to take like emergency situations, okay? I always have a protein bar with me. I prefer food or a shake as my first choice, but if I'm like on a hike or something or sometimes traveling, yes, they come in, they come in handy. Forty-three, you need muscle building supplements. Start with a good whey protein isolate. Second, I would say make sure you got a good amino acid. Essential amino acid would be key. Third, look for a good creatine monohydrate. Those three are usually a pretty awesome combination for building muscle. Maybe a close fourth would be like a ZMA, especially if you're 43, get a little extra testosterone support. Take uh, that before you go to bed. Could be really helpful. Okay, set two. <sighs> Thank <sighs> you. 
You guys will feel a crazy burn if you do that right. You'll feel it in your biceps, but you should feel a lot in your lats there as well. How do I stay hydrated on what now? On my weekly hikes. I always, I always, so I, you know, it's like those camel packs or those hydration packs. I do 60 ounces of water with um, nine grams of essential amino acids. I usually do the Diamantize all nine. So then I'll go through all 60 ounces on my hike. But I try and stay well hydrated going into a hike. So I hike eight to 15 miles every Saturday, um, well hydrated going in. And then I sip on that 60 ounces throughout, this, throughout the hike. Do you avoid caffeinated pre-workouts if I work out in the evening? Um, I usually don't work out in the evening, but if I do, yes, I'm gonna go a lot lighter on the caffeine. Caffeine. I don't like to do any caffeine within four hours of bedtime. So if it falls within that time frame, I try to avoid it. All right, set three. Big burn. Definitely feeling that we're starting to get a little more fatigued. I'm gonna lighten up for our next set there so we can get the good reps in that we want. Straps am I wearing? I use um, these unbound gear straps. I really like these. Um, it provides that support without having to worry about wrapping up. You know, if I'm like going for a really, really heavy deadlift, sometimes the wrist straps are nice, but uh, wrist wraps are usually like this are good just for Typical back day. You've got a pull day, but you want to work shoulders. Focus on your rear delt. Things like face pulls that we're going to do here in a minute. Um, reverse flies and things like that are usually really good. Do I need to change the way I train if I'm going into a cut versus a bulk? Do you need to change the way you're training if you're going into a cut versus going into a bulk? No. Change your diet. You should always train pretty heavy and pretty hard. Now, as you get really far into a cut, you may not have the energy and focus to really hit your heavy compound movements. That would be the only time I might back off a little bit. Okay, final set. light days will cause a lot of burn whereas your heavy days you know not as much burn a little more on the joints and such so we're done on there we're going to move on now to a fun little superset where we finish off back and get into rear delts so why was i sitting backwards on my last exercise the main reason is because it, they're both fine but when you have your knees supported, you have the tendency to rock sometimes and maybe even use a heavier weight than you should. Try it reverse and you're gonna notice that you're not rocking as much, which will make a very big difference in the overall contraction that you get through your lats. So for our next one here that we're doing, um, we're gonna focus on, again, getting into lats and rear delts. So we're gonna go with the 15 reps still that we have listed for pullovers 
but we're gonna dive right into a superset for reverse face pulls as well. And this one, if you guys have never tried doing your pullovers like this, give it a try. I think you'll really like the way this helps to isolate the lats. Pretty lightweight. We're gonna come back here. We're gonna pull straight down. Three. Four. Let the weight up, and then we're going to turn around. The nice thing is you can do this still sitting on the bench that you have for your face pulls. So we're going to grab thumb side down, knuckles up here, and I'm going to sit on my bench, and I'm going to pull back to the top of my head. So this is our rear delt portion of the workout here. The face pull is also very good for overall rotator cuff health as well. I take typically dimatized pre-woe um, as my pre-workout of choice. Occasionally, I might kick back on the caffeine and just go with like amino energy. So some aminos with some caffeine in them or something like that. But typically I'll do a half a scoop, do a full scoop of dimatized pre-woe. So if you have a fast metabolism and you want to gain mass, what do I recommend? It's food. It's a lot of food and it's consistently eating a lot of food. The mistake I see people make, they've got a fast metabolism. They go like four days where they get in their 4,000 calories or whatever it is they're shooting for. And then they get lazy for a couple days, drop down to 2,000 and then wonder why they're not making gains. Every day you've got to be up there in calories. Pull-ups are one of the most effective exercises, especially for building mass through your back and strength. Um, I do pull-ups on my heavy back day, okay? Because normally I'm getting eight to 10 quality reps in, and I wanna get a little more than that on a light day. Okay, here we go. Pull-overs, really focus on that mind-muscle connection with the lats. <sighs> Squeeze every rep. Contract the lats. There you go, let it go, turn around. Like I said, you don't have to do this seated on here, but it's pretty easy to just switch right around. And the seated position, I think will allow you to be a little more strict here than if you do it standing. Squeezing the rear delts here. If you're not incorporating face pulls in your workout, you need to. Great exercise. Right? 
the best pre-workout carb between rice, potatoes, and pasta. Find what works best for your body. It's hard for me to tell you what the best one is. I like jasmine rice pre-workout. Also don't mind a sweet potato. Um, pasta, I'd say that's probably the third option of the three. Probably sits a little heavier, a little harder to digest for most people. If the cables are taken, what's the best alternative for a pullover? You can do a dumbbell pullover. So you grab a dumbbell and do the same thing. The only thing I like more about the cables is that constant tension coming back from the cables that you miss out on if you're doing dumbbells. Okay, final set, only three sets because it's a super set here. <sighs> Go back, turn right around. Try to limit the time that you spend in transition here. We want to keep this workout going. Two, three, four, five, eight, nine. There it is, three sets. Remember, supersets, we're typically only going to do three sets rather than the four. Cardio before or after your workout? Do it when you can and when you feel best. Typically, I recommend cardio after your workout. You want to use through your carbohydrate stores and your main energy during your weight training and then finish off with the cardio training. So we're done with the back and the delt. Now it's time to move on and do some curls. So we're gonna start off with a seated barbell curl. Um, not an exercise that I do a ton, but one that I really, really like to include. So we'll go here, is this guy too close for us? Okay, we're gonna go right here for a seated barbell curl. Now for this one, we're not going all the way down. So we're focusing on the top part of the movement here. Not gonna go super heavy, but I really like this for building a strong, strong contraction in the biceps. We're gonna play around, start with 60 pounds, see how that feels for 15 reps. Keep in mind, we already did our heavier bicep curls on our heavy back day, so now it's time to really get the good squeeze in. And by this point in time, the pump should start hitting you pretty daggone hard. If you got your headband and gains on, you'll feel the power come through as you do this exercise. Here we go. Pretty hard to cheat here. It's, um, you're not gonna get a whole lot of rock going on because we got that back support there and really, really good for building that pump, that contraction through the biceps. Any tips for uneven pecs or muscles? Tips for uneven pecs or muscles. Um, use a lot of dumbbell and cable work where possible to make sure that you're working both sides evenly. Maybe try to avoid a lot of barbell work as one side can pretty easily compensate. Do, you ever do, all do I ever do all kettlebell workouts? Occasionally for fun. I've got some kettlebells at home and if I just want to stay home, there's a lot you can get done with kettlebells. All right, 
Set two, keeping our rest time fairly short here. 15 reps on the seated curl. So I'm letting it touch my legs. I'm not bouncing off my legs. So if you're heading out to the nightclub tonight, it's a good exercise to do before you throw on that schmedium to really bust at the seams. You're gonna be swole for about a day or so after doing these biceps exercises. Do I prefer straight bar or easy bar? I prefer easy bar most of the time. Find it a little easier on my wrists. This particular curl doesn't bother me if I do a straight bar. So I kind of like to throw that variation in there. What does your ideal burger look like? My ideal burger, whew, what does that look like? I like a juicy patty cooked medium rare, okay? Always like blue cheese when possible. I like thick cut candied bacon if I can. I like a fried egg on there and I like a good like house fry sauce, maybe some onions and some lettuce and the bun. It's gotta be like a nice brochet bun, nice and thick, fluffy, the kind where if, right when you put your finger into it, it leaves an indent. I haven't thought about it much, but yeah. All right, let's get on with our bicep curls, guys. Third set. It's burning. The kind where you just gotta shake your arms out a little bit. And the pump here, you'll start noticing vascularity, and you'll start noticing a lot more size, pump. The brachialis will come in with this exercise as well. Just a good exercise to really build size in your biceps and arms. What's the difference between EAAs and BCAs? The difference between EAAs and BCAs, very good question. Branch chain amino acids only carry three of the amino acids, the leucine, <coughs> excuse me, isoleucine and valine, where, <coughs> whereas essential amino acids contain those, but then six others typically to make it more of a complete protein. Um, research is showing that the essential amino acids are probably a little more favorable for building muscle, although branch chain amino acids are pretty good at preventing muscle breakdown. So if you're training hard, for longer than 60 minutes, I recommend essential amino acids. What are some recommended macros for cutting? Recommended macros for cutting really depends on the individual um, and where you're starting. 40-40-20, uh, protein, carbs, and fats is usually a pretty good place to start. Um, some people might get as much as you know 50 or 60% protein, 20 or 30 carbs, and about 20, 30 fat. Percent. Percent, yes, not grams. How long should your workouts last? Depends on how much time you're spending talking and how much time you're spending working. But really isn't a need for your workout to go over 60 minutes for just strength training. So, you know, we'll be done here with a lot of talking in 45, 50 minutes with a really good pull workout. What's the worst thing you see in the gym? The worst thing I see in the gym. You know, lat pull down machine is one that just eesh, irks me as a trainer because it's done wrong nine out of every 10 times. But the other thing that really bothers me is leg extension as well. People that put too much weight on the leg extension and just hump it up with every single rep. Um, I could just stand by the, the lat pull down leg extension and correct people's form all day long. And usually it comes from, if I just had to be very broad with it, using more weight than you should. Leave your ego at the door, come in and work with weight that you can handle. Okay, final set. Let's blow these biceps up, baby. Mm. 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 
nine, ten, one, ah, woo, there it is. We've just got one more round of biceps to do now. <clears throat> For this guy, we're gonna head back over to the cables. And you guys know that I'm a big fan of BFR training. If you've watched before, um, blood flow restriction training. So we're gonna do a cable curl here where we do a little BFR. The BFR is nice to do at the end of a workout um, because you get more work done in less time with less weight. So after a back day, you're, you should be pretty tired, pretty exhausted not a lot of time or energy left to bash out biceps. So this is exactly how I would include BFR. So we're gonna do four sets here and we call this, this is a cluster set, okay? We're gonna start with 30 reps to drive a lot of blood into the muscle and then that's gonna keep it there. We're gonna take a 30 second rest for three more sets of 15. If you want to build mass, should you do higher reps with less weight or less reps with more weight? Um, I don't know why we have to pick one or the other. Let's do a combination. The routine I'm doing right now is a perfect example. We're doing um, one day where we go 10 to 15 reps, a little higher, and then one day where we do lower reps, you know, maybe five to eight per muscle group, which is a great way to really incorporate all the mu muscle fibers and get the benefits of it. So don't pick one, you don't have to. Okay, so we're gonna go an easy bar cable here. Like I said, pretty light. The benefits of BFR is you get more weight done, or more work done in less time with less weight. So we're gonna tighten up the straps. A lot of questions about how tight to make your BFR straps. You're gonna place it right under the deltoid and you're gonna tighten it up to about a seven out of 10, okay? So that would be like discomfort level this is about a seven out of 10. You shouldn't be absolutely killing yourself here with how tight they are. And then we're gonna go, the first set is the volume set where we drive the blood into the muscle and then it's gonna stay there for the rest of the three sets, cause extra metabolic stress on the muscle, which in this case will equal extra gains. Sweet, so full length to my BFR workout just went up in the chat. So we're gonna start off 30 reps here, and then we take a 30 second break. Let's get a pump on. Whew, 30 second break, watch the clock. The blood is in there and it hurts. Does blood pump help muscle growth? A little bit, yeah. It's gonna swell the cells, it's gonna cause some extra metabolic stress which can lead to extra muscle growth. I do BFR, you know, my rule of thumb is no more than two cluster sets per day per muscle group, but I also say no more than one BFR workout per muscle group per week. We're coming up now, 30 seconds, time to dive in. 15 reps now. <sighs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Woo! Thirty seconds. You don't want to leave these on all workout. You do one cluster set of usually four sets, and then you got to release the tension. But the pump here the roadmap vascularity that you will get from BFR workouts is awesome. So yeah, building muscle is cool, but you know what's almost cooler? Is just that nasty, nasty pump that you get during a workout. 
So if you see here, we're gonna take this road up to Gainesville. We're gonna hang a right and we're gonna go straight to Pump Town up this train. All right, time's up, let's go. 15, here it is. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Ooh, 30 seconds. And then we'll do one final set before we release the tension. When am I getting a new headband again? I ordered one and I, I don't know where it is. I got to check on it. Um, I'm due for one. I do wash it occasionally, okay? And I usually only save the headband gains for our Flex Friday workout. So it's okay. It's still got another workout or two left in it. Do I lose gains when I wash the headband of gains? Um, I think you lose some, but you have the ability to gain it back. But it's worth it. It's a risk reward thing. All right, here we go. Final set, 15. Uh, my arms feel like they're going to fall off. Good sign. Here we go. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, uh, uh, eight, nine. There it is, guys. We're gonna take this off. Now we could do as many as two cluster sets there. We're gonna call it good with that one set. Take the straps off and we are going to tune out for today. Guys, we appreciate you checking in. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up on my Instagram at trainermike1. Um, always have good content going up on there and happy to answer your questions there. So feel free to check me out there. You guys can also check out that podcast, The Fit Couples Perspective. Check me out on Body Space at Mr. Symmetry and Facebook athlete page at Trainer Mike Physique. That's it for back and biceps. You guys have a good Flex Friday. Boom!